Hi friends, we have another book for you today, and this one is a baseball, another baseball book, and it's about Josh Gibson. Now, if you don't know who Josh Gibson is, uh, I suppose we can cut you a little slack. You might not have heard of him, but as the title, or subtitle says, he was baseball's greatest home run hitter. Josh Gibson played in the uh, Negro Leagues, as they called it then, the Black Leagues. Uh, primarily played for the Homestead Grays, which were out of the Pittsburgh area. And my father uh, often told me about going to see games that the Homestead Grays played uh, in the baseball stadium that was normally used by the Pittsburgh Pirates. But when the Pirates were away, Forbes Field was used for other teams, and uh, the Homestead Grays were one of them. And... Uh, he told me that there was nobody, nobody ever played like Josh Gibson. So, if you don't know about Josh, here's a little story that might uh, get you interested, and you can, I'm sure, Google Josh Gibson and find out more. So, this is Coming Home by Natalie Malage, illustrated by Cornelius Van Wright and Ying Hua Hu. Coming Home. Coming Home. A story of Josh Gibson, baseball's greatest home run hitter. The best hitter I ever saw? Bet here's one you won't know. He played many years ago for the Homestead Grays, a Negro League team in Homestead, Pennsylvania. And Josh Gibson was his name. In those days, segregation was the law of the land. Blacks and whites lived in separate neighborhoods, went to separate schools, even rode in separate sections of the same bus. It was no different with baseball. White players had the major leagues, and black players had the Negro Leagues. The Negro Leagues had a lot of great players. Josh Gibson, Buck Leonard, Satchel Paige, Smokey Joe Williams were all well known to Negro League fans, just as Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Ty Cobb were to the major league fans. Pop took me to every home game the Grays played. I was 10 when Josh joined the team. He was just 18 years old, but to me, he looked like a giant. And that man was fast. By the time outfielders chased down a ball he'd hit, Josh would already be on third base. He was also powerful, so big and so strong that everyone took to calling him Thunder. Each time Josh was up to bat, we'd yell, Thunder's coming. It didn't take the fielders long to figure out what that meant, because Josh hit hard. The year they signed Josh was one of the best ever for the Grays. They whipped all the comers and won 11 games out of 12 on a barnstorming tour against the Kansas City Monarchs. We call them the King of the East because it looked to us like there was no one left to beat. Then along came John Henry Lloyd. He was shortstop and manager for the New York Lincoln Giants. The Giants had also completed a winning season, so Lloyd challenged the Grays to a 10-game series to see which team would be the Negro League champions. Nearly everybody in turn down, turned down for the series opener. The Grays took the first game with a score of 9-1. to one. In the second game, Josh did us proud with a home run over the center field fence. The next four games were played out of town, so Pop had to buy the Pittsburgh Courier and turn straight to the sports page to see what we'd missed. The Grays were ahead of Lincoln's four games to two, but game seven was going to be played at the famous Yankee Stadium. Pop couldn't stand to miss out on that game, so he decided it was a good time for us to pay a visit to Uncle Ray in New York. We wanted to get a good look at the place that was home to Yankee greats Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, so we got to the stadium early, staring up at the triple-tiered stands that stood as high as a ten-story building. I felt swallowed up by the size of it. In fact, it was the first ballpark ever built that was large enough to be called a stadium. To see the best of the Negro Leagues play in the most famous ballpark in the world would be something I'll never forget. Some of the players were warming up on the field, and I spotted Josh right away and called out, Hey, Josh, will you hit a home run for us today? He came up to us and said, I'm sure going to try. He gave me my, his autograph and shook Pop's hand. The smile on Pop's face was just about the biggest anyone ever had, I reckon. We could have gone home right then and there, and the day just couldn't get any better than that. 
but it sure could get worse. From the outset, the Lincoln team had the Grays on the run. Their starting pitcher was Luther Farrell, one of the finest pitchers in the league, and was at the top of his game that day time and time again. Our Homestead boys struck out. We were all feeling a little down when Josh came to the plate for the fourth time. He hadn't gotten a single hit off Farrell the whole game. Farrell led a third pitch, and Josh swung his mighty arm, strike three. When Josh went back to the dugout and laid his bat down, my heart sank right along with it. The Grays were trailing, and things didn't look to be getting any better. Pop was so nervous, he took his hat off and nearly bent it in two. At the top of the ninth, John Henry Lloyd sent Broadway Rector to the pitcher's mound. Broadway had a slow ball that could fake out the best sluggers in the league, so when he stepped on the field, the Lincoln crowd went wild. Josh was up to bat again, and as he walked to the batter's box, I could hear people saying, that kid can't hit. Go ahead, Broadway, hand that boy back to his mama. Pop must have heard it too, because he got mad, real mad. He stood up right in the middle of everybody and yelled, Look out now! Thunder's coming! Then I heard someone else shout, Thunder's coming! I got up too, and soon all the Graves fans were shouting, Thunder's coming! I don't know if Josh heard us, but down in the batter's box, he looked like he was standing even taller than usual. Up and up it went until it hit the back wall of the bullpen and disappeared. Right out of Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Well, even the Lincoln fans had to put their hands together for Josh. Everybody in the stands was clapping. Come on home, boy. Come on home. Josh was a fast runner, but just this once he took his time and trotted every base, grasped every outstretched hand. Pop's hat was so twisted he couldn't wear it anymore, so he just threw it in the air and shouted, Come on home. No player in any league before or since had hit the ball as far as Josh did that day. And for me, I've yet to see a finer sight than that afternoon in September 1930 when Thunder came on home. So that's Coming Home, a story about Josh Gibson. Hope you enjoyed that one. Um, not too long till baseball season, is it? <laughs> so uh, always good to read stories about our heroes, no matter where they come from, superheroes, Baseball heroes, police, firefighter heroes, teacher heroes, lifelong learner heroes, all good stuff. Coming home, story about Josh Gibson.